since GDPR, which is the data protection rule of EU, which, is, which has come into, um, into effect, and as Dr. Govind mentioned, that uh, who is requires certain information to be stored, and GDPR, on the other hand, says certain information should not be there. Typically, there is a case going on in the German courts where an ICANN registrar, um, between ICANN registrar and ICANN, um, about certain data which should be there and should not be there, and ICANN has come up with a proposal on how to um, kind of address the GDPR requirements, but um, there is still much more discussions happening, which is primarily the EPDP process. Uh, there is a discussion on the next round of generic top-level domain names. Um, there was the first round, which happened about two years back, Samira, the new, the first new GTLD, 2012. 2012. Um, so there is a discussion on what went well, what didn't go well, what are the corrections needed. For example, there was, um, there is an application of dot .amazon, um, which was filed by the dot .amazon book company, as in the e-commerce company. However, there were concerns raised by certain states of South America uh, who said that um, typically it cannot uh, you know, be bought by a, a, an organization because it has, it has a cultural interest, a geographical interest. Uh, so that case has been going on for quite some time and we hope to see some kind of a midway uh, solution. The ICANN board has asked um, the working group to come up with a solution in this meeting itself. Um, so there are certain roles which are, you know, uh, rules which are being framed, for example, I think uh, Mr. Gosai would be speaking about something called the Working Group 5, wherein how the geographical names would be taken care of is being discussed. Um, then there is also going to be a discussion on something called as the KSK rollover, which started, um, which is of the roots, uh, root key being signed again. So how it worked, how it did not work. Um, then. Um, so these are primarily some of the discussions which are supposed to be taking uh, place at ICANN 63. Now, if I'm looking at from the at-large perspective, which is the internal discussions which would be happening for the com end user community, there is an at-large review which had happened by an independent council. So those, how to implement those reviews would be something which would be discussed out there. Um, there would be a discussion on the rules and procedures for um, and how it would be fine-tuned. Um, and of course, discussions within the working groups. Uh, subsequently, though in ICANN 63, each of the um, supporting organizations and advisory council would be having their individual meetings, there would be cross-community discussions too, because not each of these constituencies work alone, they work together. So there are various meetings which happens together. There are meetings which happens with the ICANN board. Uh, also, which may be of interest is all these meetings, most of them are open and you can view them online even from wherever you are. It's not that you have to go to the ICANN meetings to attend them. Um, and you, there are transcripts available which you can view later on too. Um, and if you have any queries, they have the public forums wherein you can raise your questions which would be answered by the ICANN board. So I think, Dr. Govind, I should stop here. Uh, have I crossed my num time? Thank you, Amrita, for giving an overview of the ICANN 63 meetings. What is the, there to you know, everybody to chew during the meeting or remotely? Now I will turn to Mr. Rahul Gosai, the director in the ministry, and who is a GAC member, very important advisory committee of the ICANN, which all you know, where the more than 50 governments are the members in this GAC. And, and the GAC is pursuing this EPDP process, the expedited policy development process, how they are going to deal with it, how they are going to, how the governments look at this entire EPDP process in the context of ICANN get impacted from the GDPR. So this is the one which I would request uh, Mr. Rahul Gosaiji to. Thank you, Mr. Govind. Um, and a very good evening to you all. Uh, just a brief introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Rahul Gosai and I'm, as Dr. Govind rightly pointed out, uh, uh, director in the Ministry of Electronics and IT. And, um, I would say that the job of a speaker who uh, normally speaks at the end is is a bit of a two-edged kind of a sword. It's it's a 
it cuts both ways. So, so, but, but, I mean, just taking the positive part of it, uh, when you're speaking after such a long list of uh, such illustrious speakers, then you can be reasonably sure that at least the audience is sufficiently uh, uh, sufficiently uh, uh, prepared and sufficiently uh, enabled about about the subject uh, matter which is under discussion. Of course, uh, uh, there's also the fact that uh, the boredom and inui kind of tends to set in and, and that we can vouchsafe by the numbers present in the house now uh, after we've all had uh, lunch and tea. Uh, but, I mean, that having been said, uh, uh, so I don't want to bore you people with, with more details about what ICANN does. I'm sure you've had your fill of that and you are, you are pretty, pretty well versed in, in the various policy tracks which are being discussed at ICANN, the great work that ICANN is doing and, and you know how you have several <laughs> opportunities to engage with in ICANN. But I want to kind of bring you towards the subject which is uh, fast becoming a central kind of a issue, a burning issue, a topical issue for this ICANN meeting in particular. And that is, as, as has also been pointed out and referred to by several of my predecessors, is what is known as the EPDP process. So hopefully I expect that by now uh, most of the people in this room at this juncture would be aware about what a who is directory looks like and what purpose in general it serves. Now, technology, as, as my friend Jay Podial also rightly pointed out, that um, it is it is an enabler. It is a key enabler for us and it is uh, affecting our lives so powerfully in more ways than one that we are slowly and surely becoming accustomed to it. We are expecting it to work. For instance, uh, what Jay pointed out that abracadabra.com, so there's a HTTP and there's a www. But nonetheless, today, even if you just type in abracadabra.com in the browser, or even abracadabra in the browser, we expect it to work. And there are certain routines and certain protocols which, which make sure that it works. So essentially the who is directorate, uh, directory is also a, some kind of a relic of the past which we have become used to. And now suddenly with the advent of data protection legislations worldwide, for instance like the GDPR, we are faced with a situation wherein we are faced with the prospect of a day without who is or a day without unfettered full public access to the who is data. And this is a central conundrum which is, which is occupying the attention of the, I would say, the, the, the topmost brains uh, working in the internet ecosystem in the domain industry. And, and they are applying themselves to, together collectively as to how to go about determining and deciding and framing what should be possibly policy going future, going forward from here. So um, a question which was posed to me is how is ICANN coping with the who is in the wake of the GDPR? And I would like to flip the question over its head and say and frame it as under how is ICANN coping with the GDPR with respect to the who is. So as we know, who is is something which is very integral and very central to ICANN. And ICANN's existence as a coordinator of the entire world's unique identifier system. So it is at the very essence of what ICANN does in the whole system of things. And quite frankly, in my opinion, if you take away the who is and you remove this central and core reason for ICANN's very existence. So unfortunately, what the GDPR has precipitated recently is precisely this. And ICANN is in no mood to give up on the who is in a hurry. In fact, they have been trying to fend it off for the last 20 years, and they have done it successfully, and uh, still going on, still continuing to do so. So, I mean, we all know that ICANN has its part in the community-driven bottom-up, consensus-led model of policy development. And they have chartered what is known as the expedited policy development process, brackets, uh, EPDP, for confirming 
the temporary specification which has been put in place on the 17th of May, just one week prior to the date when the GDPR was set to go into force, into applicability, that is the 25th of May, as approved by the ICANN board. Now, there are several core or so-called gating questions that the above group is exploring, is grappling with, most of which are actively, like, I mean, most of you in the room who have had some chance or some opportunity to actively follow the developments taking, this, uh, taking place in this group would possibly be familiar with some of the gating questions. So, there are a lot of ongoing discussions within this group and, and uh, just for the sake of brevity and, and, and without belaboring it uh, too much, um, there are questions around what constitutes what is called legitimate purpose. How do you define or establish various legitimate purposes for which third parties could access data pertaining to EU data subjects, distinguishing between legal and natural persons vis-a-vis -vis, uh, using a one-stop, one, one uniform, one-size-fit-all kind of a global rollout of a model applicable to all, distinguishing in the application of the GDPR based upon geographic ac applicability, data transfers between registries and registrars, data transfers between escrow providers, issues of reasonable access and what exactly that is supposed to mean. Uh, there are issues pertaining to possible framework elements of what is known as or what is being pushed as what is being touted as a unified access model for access to non-public who is data by third parties for legitimate purposes. There are issues pertaining to collection and as to how much data should be collected pertaining to the data subjects, what should be done with the data, what are the standards which should be uh, ensured in order to, uh, to, to, uh, to maintain the sanctity and the privacy of that data. What are the respective responsibilities of the various, various parties involved in the process? For instance, what are the responsibilities of the registrars? What are the responsibilities of the registry owners? What are the responsibilities of the data escrow providers? What are the responsibilities of ICANN? What is the protocol to be adopted going forward? Namely, whether it is going to be the who is, or whether there is going to be a sunsetting kind of a period for the who is, whether it is going to be the RDAP. So all these questions we are grappling with. What would be published in future who is? What are the other issues regarding consent, collection, and disclosure of data that is required to be dealt with? And a whole lot of other questions and issues, in particular, those pertaining to prevention of cybercrime, issues of abuse involving domain names, registrations, DNS abuse, consumer protection, and intellectual property violations. So, essentially, all these are very relevant questions which are kind of being beaten to death and almost flogged threadbare by the uh, very erudite kind of minds who are at place, uh, most of them lawyers. So, uh, but I mean, the, the, the whole objective or the whole goal is to arrive at what is not only compliant with the law, but also uh, possibly consistent with ICANN bylaws. It should be a policy which should be consistent with ICANN bylaws and all policies, and it should be acceptable to the GNSO and the ICANN board, because there's no point if you create a work of art, a masterpiece to yourself, and then at the end of the process, it doesn't sail with the ICANN board or the GNSO council and it becomes a dead duck. So, so, so the objective is to come up with something which is not only compliant with the law, but which is realistic, which is implementable, and which is acceptable. So that is, I think, a very big ask, but uh, uh, let's hope that uh, we should be able to go about achieving that <laughs> ask. And the idea is to, to, to take into concerns, uh, take into account the concerns of all the various stakeholders, including uh, the registries, the registrars, the, 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 the ALAC, the, 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 uh, the business community, the, the contracted parties, the ISPC, the NCSG, which is the non-commercial stakeholders group, the governments, and all the other stakeholders. So. Uh, I mean, without belaboring the issue too much, uh, given uh, all of you are at the fag end of a very hard day, and, and, and uh, but I, I, I think I've shared uh, a flavor of, of what to expect 
uh, if if you decide to ultimately pursue this further and decide to take a dive into into the going ons of the EPDB, and I thoroughly encourage you, uh, any of you who may be interested in this subject, to kind of uh, try and and explore more. So as regards where things stand as of now, uh, as of now, I think uh, ICANN has rolled out the full deal. I mean, they are they have engaged what are called professional negotiators. So we have a team called the CBI, uh, and they are represented on to all our conference calls, and, 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 and they are engaging fully in the process, trying to reconcile the various divergent positions of the various stakeholders and trying to bring them as close together as possible to that final objective of, of uh, you know, a policy, as I said, which should not only be implementable, acceptable, and it should be compliant with the law, and the holy grail. And uh, as far as uh, the other things which are yet to be rolled out, there is something in the works about a data protection uh, or privacy impact assessment study which is to be uh, uh, taken up. There are talks about uh, seeking independent legal counsel. So there will be an independent legal firm engaged to just to provide us with the independent opinion about whether this will be the, uh, the, the kind of policy which we are trying to build will be compliant with the law. So that is that is the general uh, flavor as, as, as things stand and as, as uh, we expect, as per the timelines which have been provided, we expect to be able to present a final, uh, sorry, an initial report as they call it at the end of this month, just after ICANN 63. And then of course uh, there is the usual process of putting out the report for 45 days or something for, for public comments and then it will be put up through the council. There will be uh, the, the, the various chartering organizations will be provided with the opportunity to have their take or have their say on that. Then it will go to the council and eventually to the ICANN board. So these, this is how things stand. As regards, uh, you know, what, what implications it has for, for, for um, data privacy legislations elsewhere, all I can say is that, you know, um, trying to impute that. Uh, any discussions which are taking place in any room inside ICANN are going to impact India's data privacy legislation is, is probably a stretched argument. However, uh, if we turn it around, then uh, we have definitely, from the point of view of the government, made sure that we have registered the government's concerns in this group regarding uh, whether it be the taking into account or on board the national data protection legislation which is in the works, so have other countries, so have other governments. I mean, uh, there's, there's a recently rolled out data protection legislation from Brazil, there's something in Iran which is in the making, and, 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 and so, so, so ultimately uh, we have uh, throughout the, the process tried to sensitize the various stakeholders about giving due cognizance and due regard uh, to the importance of the local and national data privacy and protection legislations. As regards the, the implications, the further implications I would say is, is it has some implications if, if I may say so, if I may be allowed to say so for, for the growth of, the continued growth of GTLDs and, and eventually for the bridging of the digital divide. So although, although uh, I don't know what it has uh, to do strictly with the multilingual internet or for, for, for uh, these issues, but it has, in a way, if we stretch the argument a bit far, then it has, uh, in a way, even an impact on, on the continued uh, existence of what we understand as a boundless and interoperable internet. So, uh, as I explained to you for the reasons which I mentioned in the very introduction, how central this idea is to, to the existence of ICANN and to the existence of internet. So, so I would just like to sum up by reiterating once again that uh, uh, it's important uh, enough a subject that we all try and get involved and engaged in it and, and, and try and, and, and understand more about what is at stake and then try and engage and participate in the best manner we can. So with these words, uh, uh, because, because this has implications for not only the interrelatedness, but also the uh, other issues of the internet. With that, I would like to sum up. Thank you. Thank you, Rahul Musaiji, and very, very
very simplistic way you have put up the you know EPDP process and how the ICANN is working out and how it is impacts the other certain GDPR and the other such legislations which is coming up in the other parts of the world and how the GAC is looking into this kind of process. Of course, this is as Rahul Ji has said, you know, this is a kind of process which one has to understand. It is, it is a long drawn things coming up from 2007 in ICANN. I recall when RDAP and other WHOIS things were started that time until 2018. And newer, newer challenges are uh, faced by the ICANN for variety of issues and all that. I have, I think, f uh, uh, five minutes for question answer. Yes, please. Identify yourself and pose the question. Pose. <coughs> Dr. S.K. Jain from IIT Delhi. Uh, one very small question and clarification rather from Dr. Gosain. Uh, this registry and registrar, uh, you are distinct, I mean, having uh, some distinction between the two. I thought the registry is headed by the registrar or something like that, as it happens in trademark office and so many other offices, geographical indication office, etc. So what is the difference one? And about from uh, Dr. Jaya, I would like to ask you one thing, again a more clarification. You said about, uh, you know, uh, dot store, dot job, dot health, dot magic, dot club, dot rental, dot NGO, dot photography, etc. It is already in force or it is the proposal? It is already in force. It is already, it is already there, yes. You okay. can buy. Okay, now in that case, sir, like uh, I take one minute if you permit me, sir. Yes. Uh, we had a system that in the library there was one book only. There was no need of any classification. Then two books. Then, you know, it was science and, you know, some language. Then so many things started. So the classification system, the library started. Same happened, first patent was filed. There was no classification, but now there is a classes, class, subclass, everything is there in the patent classification. So similarly, I think uh, some such classification is to be evolved for the domain names also. Uh, it is not that we just we are giving some names, but maybe uh, several thousand names can be there and a proper classification. Uh, I think everything is the call of the day now. Yeah, I think uh, no. this is the part which I can new GTLD process started yeah. because where earlier it was all under the dot com or dot org, the entire gamut of spectrum of objects and services were under one dot com. Yeah. So thereafter this new process of classification under like doc, doctor, dot engineer, dot pharmacology, and dot books, you know, again classification to the particular specific areas of work started, NGO. So it should not be clubbed under one umbrella.com. So that classification uh, part which you are talking about is that classification which I can, I think today 2000 new GTLDs are already in, already in the I can, 1200 are there. So which covers most of the classification part. Today we are thinking that way. Yeah. Um, sir, just that, to add to it. Today we think that 1200 is enough, but I think in another 20 years, we will need uh, 1.2 lakhs. Okay, so therefore there is need for classification. So, uh, just and to add to it, sir, um, sorry to interrupt, there is a cla when, when anyone is applying for a new GTLD, there is a process to be followed. There are checklists, as in if I, for example, go to ICANN and say I want to have a new GTLD dot Amrita, they will not give it to me. There is a process which has to be followed. There are clearances which has to be taken. For example, if I want to give an application for dot Delhi, I will not get it. I have to take at this point of time certain clearances even the uh, sovereign uh, clearances has to be taken only then and there is a process which is no, no that's fine i am not no no as in uh, i'm yeah, coming yeah. as in it uh. is not randomly given to anyone and everyone it has to be actually it is a process it is vetted only after it, that it is given and even after getting it there are certain criteria which has to be maintained now coming to how they are classified, when you are having the domain names in the root zone file, they are already systematically placed based upon, which obviously we don't see, but there is a file and they are archived in such a way so that when we type in into this uh, in our URLs, we hit that place. Just like you in a library, you have, uh, you know, the librarian would be having a checklist or certain kind of process through which they know which book is in which corner and they can guide you there. Uh, similarly is with the uh, domain names. What you said is perfectly all right. What, what I said is different. 
Well, okay. just just yeah. to answer your first question, yeah. sir. Uh, uh, I am not Dr. Gosai. I am Rahul Gosai. I try to make it as simple as I can tell you. So, the registry that is the registry, that is the, like for instance, dot .in, the top level is the registry. And the registry has on its behalf appointed several registrars to, to deal with uh, the domain names and the direct selling of, of, of the, the domain names. So, so there are two separate entities. One is the registry owner or the registry service provider and, and then there are the registrars. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sure. Uh. So uh, <coughs> to your question, uh, so when you apply for a new GTLD, it has to fall under one of the four categories. One is uh, geographic, for example, country codes, or uh, that includes cities and regions and countries. Okay, so if you want to do a dot Delhi, it has to preferably be the municipal corporation of Delhi, for example, okay, or the state of Delhi. Uh, so that in itself is classification, and then you have brands like a dot, uh, like let's say dot Nissan dot uh, dot Geo. Dot Geo is actually a, a, a you know top level domain. Dot Reliance. Uh, dot Reliance. Uh, dot Tata Motors. Okay, so that's uh, those are the brands. Then you uh, have another classification of professions. So your dentists and lawyers, accountants, all of that. So uh, there is some rudimentary framework which currently exists. Uh, <clears throat> the second round of this new GTLD process is going to come up, as Amrita mentioned, uh, there is a review process going on of what happened in the first round, where 1,200 uh, got, uh, 1,200 names got, uh, you know, approved. Uh, uh, now, if you would uh, wish to participate in the public comments of the second round, uh, I believe it may still be open. I'll have to check, but I can certainly share that link with you, and and uh, you can read through the uh, policy that currently exists, and uh, there are possibly some questions that uh, that you can answer, or you can give your thoughts on the policy. Thank you. All understood the so looks EPDP like, process. So looks like it's consensus by <laughs> exhaustion. <laughs> so, I think this is all the session devoted to the you know more little more technical aspects than the earlier session of multilingual. And here we talked about the who is registry, how that is getting impacted from the GDPR process, and how ICANN is grappling with it. That was the main thing which this ICANN 63 uh, meeting would be uh, discussing. Apart from the other uh, routine discussions which will be there as Amrita told. And I would request now each panelist to say one line, liner kind of thing. What you feel about the, anything? Start with you. Well, all I can say is that uh, um, ICANN is doing a great job of, of negotiating all the bumps and hurdles which they are, uh, which, 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 which get thrown at them in terms of the regular, uh, you know, course of things. And, and, and I personally feel that this meeting is one to watch out for to, to, to see how effectively ICANN goes about doing its business. So, uh, in effect, what I want to say is that, uh, you know, although, uh, it's, it's very well-intentioned and, and um, uh, the aim of protection of, of data privacy and data, uh, data of the data subjects is all very well. But by the very nature, the kind of implications and the impact this is going to have on the, on the not only on the who is directory, but also on the uh, whole existing internet as we know it. Uh, how we negotiate it and how skillfully we kind of reconcile all the divergent positions and you know make the contracted parties kind of come around and 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 um, reconcile their entrenched positions with the with the other stakeholders is going to be something to to watch out for thank you 
So typically, since the panel is on ICANN 63, in case you want to follow this, uh, the discussions or the topics, you can go to ICANN.org um, and go to ICANN 63. The schedules are there. So whichever sessions are of interest to you, you can follow them. And if you want sir, to follow any of the processes, discussions, they do have the processes currently on. You can participate directly, or you can also be a passive follower, as in just as an observer, see how the discussions are. And any time you can change uh, your uh, from an observer to a participant. So that's how you can engage. Um, and it would be great if we have more engagement from India. I want to conclude with, uh, right now we have approximately 400 million uh, net users in, in India. And, and to reach uh, uh, those 1 billion, we need multilingual internet. And, and apart from that, uh, some survey says that like uh, Hindi language content on internet will surpass English language users in India by 2021. I mean, it's just three years, matter of three years. And, and with these uh, like happy things, I mean, I have one major concern also as far as multilingual internet is concerned. These days, uh, I mean, we see so many Hindi websites, so many Bangla sites. Right now, we have less quality content online. I mean, if, if uh, I mean, I can see some content publisher here. I mean, we can request to generate more quality content to make people aware that you should start building content because monetization is there. It is coming gradually. I mean, we should develop quality content. The only content is there in multilingual is entertainment, Bollywood and all. I mean, we need educational content. We need sir, content for farmers as well. Jo aap kar rahe hain. I mean, hume har type ka content chahiye because every sector, every segment grow karna chahiye with this internet. And that is possible through only multilingual internet. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the Mr. Rahul Gosai, the other Jay, Jay and uh, the Amrita for the nice discussion and panel here. I would like to thank the audience also for patiently listening to the topic, uh, which is not very familiar, maybe the new GTLD and the EPDP process. Of course, the earlier session was quite live in the multilingual internet, which, was, which can, one can co connect. So with that, I would like to thank again ICREA for giving this panel discussions and a very live topic and ICANN 63. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Govind and uh, distinguished panelists. Um, for those of you who would like to explore or learn more about what uh, these technical discussions were on, all your folders have a small briefing document with uh, you know links to further resources. We'd also like to say that uh, one of the projects that we're working on is looking at the domain name markets in India. And there is a survey and there's a QR code. You can please take the survey and share your feedback on that as well. Uh, let me take this opportunity now to thank everyone who has made this event uh, possible. Firstly, thank you, uh, moderators and panelists, Mr. Samirin Gupta, Dr. Govind, and all the other distinguished panelists who have uh, taken time out and given, um, you know, shared their views here. Uh, and I also want to specifically thank uh, all of you for your constant uh, encouragement and support, uh, particularly Metis for supporting our projects and uh, providing um, us with an opportunity to work on these topics, and my colleagues and the events team at ICREAR, and all of you uh, that made this uh, you know, discussion through your questions and discussion a wonderful event. Thank you very much for coming, and uh, have a good evening. Thank you, Gangesh for steering the entire panel and discussions.